The following is a world class bullshitters exclusive. Folks, I went on another Ollie's road trip to show you just how bad these shelves are, no matter where you go in this country. So gear up and get ready as we go up north to find the biggest dump of merchandise at any Ollie's yet. But before we do, this video is brought to you by me, Jeff Hicks, and my graphic novel, Stealing Solo. Stealing Solo asks the greatest what if question of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? That, and a whole lot more, is answered in Stealing Solo, a Captain's parody. Stealing Solo has been called Laugh Out Loud Funny and the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs, and it's available now for a limited time only. Go to StealingSolo.com, which is powered by Shopify, so you get the reward-winning safety and security, and get yourselves a copy today. Once we sell through this limited backstock, I'm going back to the drawing board to bring you the sequel, which parodies Luke Skywalker's Fall from Grace, and finally the closing chapter, which I can't wait to get to, Frankenfisher, the Bride of Solo. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is. So folks, the only way to get that is go to StealingSolo.com right now, get yourselves a copy, and enjoy the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs. So we start our journey at Ollie's, and Ollie's like I've never seen before. Look how massive this toy display is, and it goes deep. This is probably three to four times larger than your average Ollie's store display. But what do they got? Tons of Black Panther. Shouldn't be surprised though, I wasn't. Now all the usual offenders are here. The Mask, the Spears, the Eternals, they're all here. But never in this volume before. Now let's take a look a little lower. We have more Captain Carters, more Eternals, and here we have some vintage Star Wars figures. Well, vintage style, excuse me. From the Mandalorian. We have the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin. And he's only $3.99, which is what I'd pay for these figures, because they're not very good looking. We also have the Armorer and Ahsoka. And folks, if you see the new Ahsoka out in shelves, or on shelves, and you're a collector, don't pay full price. This is the same toy in a different box. The Eternals run deep here at this Ollie's, just like every other Ollie's in America. And, uh, ooh, we got the Emperor. We don't really see Emperor Palpatine around very often, but, uh, your royal Emperor, it's good to see you. You think the Thor 5 toys will fail to sell like these ones? Because we already know that Black Panther Wakanda Forever is forever on store shelves as we turn around and are bombarded with more of the action figures that nobody wants. Now, I don't always buy stuff when I go to these stores, but I had to pick up two of these bad boys. This Sergeant Slaughter figure. Shout out to Articulated Chad for telling me more about the figure. And look, we have Stranger Things. We've never seen that at Ollie's before. We have Ego Girl, AK-11. There's the Death Star droid. More Mandalorians. Another Death Star droid. And uh, Shang-Chi is everywhere. Now, the Force was strong with this Star Wars section, meaning they forced a lot of Star Wars toys into a small area of space in a desperate attempt to sell them to people. But, uh, look, we finally have Ponda Baba and Doctor of Azin together again. Maybe people will buy the duo together. Let's see what we got back here. We got more Mandalorian vintage-style figures. And, hey, it's Boba Fett. Eh, that version of Boba Fett's just whatever. We got Chewbacca's, as far as the eye can see. There are some Last Jedi figures. Uh, there's Goldenrod, he is a permanent resident. And these are Solo A Star Wars Story toys. They're still available. And let's take a closer look at Boba Fett in a kilt. And put him right back down. Now here's an overhead shot of a lot of these things. And they're everywhere. Imagine stacking them as high as a house, because you could with all this crap. The Marvel section, again, has all the usual offenders. Ronan the Accuser, M'Baku, that one line of Black Panther figures that won't sell. And this is the genie from Disney. Hmm, what a surprise. And the Black Widow figures. Those have been around for a long time. 
Now those are pandemic toys you can chalk up to that. But everything else here? No. Like the Sherry Copter? It's just about a year old. Good job, Sherry Copter. Good job. Let's check down here. Uh, looks like we have a lot of Nemours. And the spear. You know. Let's uh let's zoom in a little. See what's back here. Eh, not much. Don't worry, there's a lot more coming, folks. A lot more. One last look at this massive display as we turn around to the Star Wars stuff. Man, Mission Fleet forever. And now this bad boy's new. We haven't seen the giant Kong from Godzilla vs. Kong yet. And we've seen this Millennium Falcon, though, from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. No, the ship's not in the movie, but that's the toy line branded for the movie. Oh, poor Dungeons & Dragons. I heard it was apparently pretty decent, but uh, the merchandise isn't moving decently, so we'll just chalk it up as a big failure. But look at the amount of this floor space, and guess what? There's more in this store alone. Hell, this might not even be the biggest display you'll see in this video. This store had a weird, stretchy Marvel end cap. No, the end cap wasn't stretchy, but the Marvel figures were. Over here, we have an end cap full of Star Wars Mission Fleet. The ships like the Razor Crest, a TIE Fighter, the Razor Crest, another TIE Fighter, this one belonging to Darth Vader. And uh, let's take a look a little closer, shall we, to see what you get in the Razor Crest box. You get Grogu, you get the Mandalorian, you get all the accessories, or accessories if you will. And uh, that's it. Let's move on to the actual toy aisle. So this store has new figures, like AEW figures. We have yet to come across them. We have Trent Beretta. We have Chris Statlander. I thought it was Thunder Rosa for a minute. And we have some old WrestleMania figures from two WrestleManias ago. Hmm. But, of course, they're flanked by Star Wars The Last Jedi, including Rey, DJ, Jyn Erso, who's not even in that movie, and poor old Luke Skywalker. That hermit will not sell. So let's take a further look down the aisle. We have even more Black Widow figures. We have the deluxe figure beyond the two-pack. And we don't see those at many ollies. But she's right next to Eternals figures, so she should feel right at home. I don't see this Thor very often either. I'm not going to buy this Thor because he looks stupid, but I haven't seen him, so that's something. Ugh, Squirrel Girl. You see what happens, how Bob Iger talks about putting message before story, or Marvel makes really stupid characters? That's Squirrel Girl, and that she's there. Now, I know she's been around for a long time, but... Almost as long as these Star Wars figures. But not quite. Well, well we got a Ray hiding behind Carl Weathers. Just, just throw them out. They're never going to sell. Take him as a loss. This store also had a Ghostbusters end cap with the shampoo bottle style figures and the wands. There's Egon, and Winston, and Peter Venkman. Didn't see any rays though. I guess Dan Aykroyd's too popular to remain on clearance shelves. Nope, there he was. Now they have a kid's book section at this store and it's all Star Wars. Yeah, I guess they really want to uh, poison the youth of America with such films or such books as Rebel Rescues. At least it's the original trilogy, so at least that's decent. And now, let's leave this Ollie's and go to another one. So here we are at another massive Ollie's, so big in fact that they don't have a sign big enough to put on this building. Let's take a look and go inside, shall we? So this toy section is massive, just like the other store. 
probably bigger though because this one is more tightly packed and they have way more of everything there's their little ghostbusters section and it is what it is Bustin makes me feel good too but this makes me feel good in a different way look at all these buzz lightyear figures that will not sell and there are cases of these things just sitting here and i don't mean like one or two cases there's like a dozen cases you're about to see in just a moment. There you go. Look at all these Buzz. It's the same thing. It's all Buzz Lightyear action figures from that terrible movie Lightyear. You know, the one that shit the bed around the world for putting messages in it? Hmm. I wonder how Disney feels when they see videos like this. <laughs> anyway, let's move on from the Buzz Lightyear figures, shall we? This is Marvel, but it's like kiddie Marvel stuff, so there's really not much to say. So let's just move on. Ah, the Eternals. They know how to ruin a good time. Just like... What the hell? I've never seen this Iron Man before. Shang-Chi Dragon. Yeah, there's so many toy sections, I don't even know where to go. Let's just go back here. This looks like a whole Star Wars... This is an end cap of Star Wars crap. Other stores... Oh, God, there's Holdo. A whole... Whole bottom case of Holdo. Ew. Let's just move on. I lost my train of thought. The chick is the worst. It's funny how Hasbro wants to do a new line similar to Mission Fleet, yet these do not sell. We'll do an exclusive video on that a little later. But here are more of the vintage style retro figures. Uh, we have Deadeye Chewie. Obi-Wan from Obi-Wan, and, ah, Bo-Katan. Folks, never pay full price for these figures. You can get them at Ollie's real cheap. Good old Zori Bliss. Anybody like her? Press one in the chat if you like Zori Bliss. Oh, we can add the uh, Jedi Starfighter to the Mission Fleet list for today. And it's got Ahsoka. So why buy the new stuff when the old stuff has the same toys inside? Anything new going to pop up in this section? Probably not. There's just so many of them, though. Collectors out there, do you feel silly paying $12 to $16 a figure for these? I'm sure you do. Yeah, I kind of regret not buying that figure, but, uh, oh well, I didn't buy Scorpina. Oh, there's our first appearance of the Black Panther in this store. I was inundated with all the other crap that can't sell, like 12 million Buzz Lightyear figures. But that's okay, folks. There's more than enough Sherry Copters to go around. Another aerial view. Look at all these Namors. There's probably two dozen right here in front of you right now, and more in the back. But we're not here to look at Namor. We're here to look at, I guess, more Black Panther figures on another row. Awesome. So now let's go to the actual toy aisle after we look at the Buzz Lightyears one more time. And their toy aisle looks like a lot of other Ollie's toy aisles. Mostly Disney, mostly Hasbro. A few other offenders here and there, like Dungeons and Dragons, which is also from Hasbro. Up top, we have Shang-Chi and our first visual of Captain Marvel. Eh, more people will see this than the Marvels. Now, we found their Marvel end cap here at Ollie's, and it's full of, again, the usual offenders. 
But this one has an unusually high concentration of Bucky Barnes action figures. Let's uh, let's swoop around here and see all the Buckys. Uh, that's a lot of Bucky. And there's even more down here. And more down here. I think Bucky might be the most packed figure in this store. That's a rarity. I don't know, man. My money would be on the Eternals still. Never bet against how terrible that movie was. Now, they hid the Star Wars books behind this pillar at this Ollie's, which is smart. I would definitely hide if I had to sell this crap. I'd hide it somewhere, because I know it wouldn't move. But yeah, there it lives. Back there. And there's some new books we haven't seen yet. Yes, we've seen Rebel Rescues before. But there was a Wampa book back there. And, um... Oh, look, the Mandalorian with magnets. How fun. Here we are at another Ollie's. This one actually has a sign out front, so you know where you're going. And, uh, let's go on inside. Again, this was another Ollie's with another massive toy section. All of this unsellable Disney junk. We have X-Wings to add to our Mission Fleet collection for today. And here's an overhead view of the... 60 spaceships? Maybe 100 spaceships on this display? Maybe you've seen three to 400 of these things in today's video alone, so there's a lot of these bad boys. It's a lot of wasted plastic on Hasbro's part. Here's the secondary Star Wars shelf, full of Last Jedi and Carl Weathers figures and, you know, the usual offenders. Turning around, we run into our worst nightmare, the Black Panther section. Again, this thing's packed to the gills, because there's a fish man in this movie, but it's packed to the gills with unsellable Marvel figures. It's kind of a bad look that these are the figures that can't sell, but they are all crappy characters, and when you put the message first and change Atlantis to whatever they changed it to in this movie, well, you might make some money at the box office and try to get an Oscar nomination, but you sure as shit aren't going to sell merchandise. And that's the whole point of these movies. To make money. Beyond the theatrical box office, they need these things to sell years later because they're so expensive. What the hell is this? A mistake is what it is. Everything you see in the news right now about Disney, this is the physical embodiment of all those bad decisions. And people don't support these bad decisions at retail. You can guilt people on the internet for not buying a movie ticket, you can't guilt them into buying these toys. And Ollie's is the prime example of just that. People do not care. Some of it is brand exhaustion. Others is just angry at the specific filmmaking choices. And others look at Shang-Chi and these movies as a big mistake. So they don't support it. And that's what happened here with Shang-Chi and the Eternals and many other things. Just so much waste. As we pull out from the family, man, I noticed something. I'm not at Target right now, so why is this car here? Let's just put it back. I was never going to buy it anyway. But it always throws me off when Ollie's has other store exclusives. It's just so weird to me. Now, this store had a Disney end cap. We have Mickey Mouse, we have the Genie, we have Ronan the Accuser, and Captain Jack Sparrow. One of these things is not like the other. Oh, that's the guy from Monsters, Inc. He's also here, too. The Mirrorverse. Well, I feel like Disney must have broken a lot of mirrors in the past to have all these years of bad luck. 
This is Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler is an okay wrestler, but there are a shitload of her action figures. Look at this. It goes up higher. Maybe it's because Shayna Baszler is basic. Maybe it's because she has no eyebrows in real life. I don't know, but nobody wants Shayna Baszler the action figure. <laughs> Let's pull back out, shall we? Our familiar cast of characters, they're all here. And a new addition like Eleven from Stranger Things. But this Ollie's yielded positive results. So much unsellable Disney crap. Are you surprised? I'm not. They do have a Marvel end cap. And as you can see, we have Captain Carter, Eternals, Age of Apocalypse Marvel figures. And of course, Eternals. I should have picked up that Madame Hydra shit. I guess my eyes glaze over at how many of these things don't sell that every once in a while when there's a decent figure for a good price. I guess I just get busy looking elsewhere. Now, this is the craziest, weirdest thing I saw the entire road trip. Star Wars The Last Jedi fishing poles to look like Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. And yeah, that's Luke's lightsaber. I don't care what anyone says. So, let's take a closer look at this lightsaber-handled fishing rod by Zebco. Could be a nice product. I don't know. I don't fish. Do you? Let me know in the comments below. But if you want one, there's a pair to have. You can get the Kylo Ren light-up rod. That doesn't sound right when you say it out loud. <laughs> let's just leave Ollie's. <laughs> so, folks... This was our road trip to Ollie's. I went about two hours north of Cincinnati to find these wonderful locations filled to the brim with the same unsellable crap from Disney that no one wants. And this is the holiday shopping season. So it's going to be interesting to return after the holidays to see if people are actually buying this shit or it's going to sit on shelves in perpetuity. Who knows? Want to know? Well, make sure you subscribe to WCBS with your bell notification turned on to all and join us each and every week for our live shows, Tuesdays and Thursdays. 2024 is going to be a great year for the channel. We already have some new shows lined up, some amazing guests, and a whole lot more. And there's only one thing you got to do to get it. Just make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And, well, here's an additional one. Pay attention for any time we go live. But, folks, 2023 has been a great year, and I've had a lot of fun hitting up these stores. These continue to go and grow, and I guess I'm going to have to take more road trips to Ollie's. This is my second one in the last few months, and we can go on more in the new year. So if you want that, let me know by doing two things. Telling me in the comments, helping this video cross some of our threshold goals. 100k on one of these videos means I'll take another road trip, I'll go out of state, I'll go wherever Ollie's are. So folks, thank you for watching. Before you go, head on over to StealingSolo.com and get yourselves a copy of the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs. Stealing Solo answers the greatest what-if question of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? That, and a whole lot more, takes place in Stealing Solo, a captain's parody. And right now, folks, for the holiday season, I'm running a special on the Fandom Menace edition. You can get four copies of the books featuring all different covers of The Phantom Menace for the price of two comics. So go to stealingsolo.com and you can check that out for yourself. We ship around the world and I ship out books very fast. If you buy your copy by December 15th, you're guaranteed delivery for Christmas. So folks, go to stealingsolo.com right now and get that. The website's powered by Shopify, so you get their award-winning safety and security. And like I said, I ship out books fast. So Stealing Soul is the perfect gift for Christmas. It is the perfect gift for Hanukkah, whatever holiday you celebrate. Festivus for the rest of us. But guess what? You can have more than a Festivus poll this year. You can have a copy of Stealing Solo. There's only one place to get it, stealingsolo.com. So folks, I'm going to get out of here. I'll be back next time with more. But in the meantime, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other.